Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Today we are looking at the sequel to The Baby Unicorn called Baby Unicorn and Baby Dragon. If you recall at the end of the last book they said she was all grown up, but apparently for the sake of continuity she is now Baby Unicorn again. They said her horn was all grown up. Hmm. So today we are reading Baby Unicorn and Baby Dragon by Jean and Claudio Marzolo, illustrated by Kimberly Vulcan Root. Different illustrator. The last book was illustrated by R.J. Blake. Once upon a time in a magic forest, there lived a baby unicorn called Star because of a little white star on her forehead. Star's favorite game was hide and seek, which she often played with the baby dragon named Moon. Also, Star's mark is more star-shaped with this illustrator than the other illustrator. Last yeah. time it was more diamond-shaped. Yeah, it's kind of... The drawings feel kind of rough to me while the animals feel kind of rough. Well, it's only the first page. One morning, Moon hid so well that Star couldn't find him anywhere. Finally, she ran to the meadow, thinking that maybe her friend might be hiding in the daisies. He's a dragon. How do you hide in the daisies when you're a dragon? Yeah. Moon was in the meadow, but he was not hiding. He was sitting on a rock in plain sight. And he was crying. Are you hurt? asked Star. Moon wiped his eyes and told her what happened. I was hiding in the grass when Smokey and Flame came by. They teased me because I haven't grown my wings yet. They're younger than I am, but their wings are huge. Star touched her friend lightly with her horn. I know how you feel, she said. Once I was the only unicorn without a horn. I had to be brave before it could grow. Even now, I'm not sure how to use its magic powers. Mother said that the braver I am, the more powerful I'll be. She also said that if I'm brave, my horn will tell me what to do. Like run charging into a whole horde of dragons. Yeah. I was also thinking that sounds like a little slightly creepy parasitic relationship. <laughs> Feed me more and I'll tell you how to live. Maybe if I'm brave, my wings will grow, said Moon. Maybe we could be brave together. But how? What could we do? Uh, yeah. Let's ask Old Greeny, said Star. Old Greeny was an enormous ancient dragon who lived in a damp, mossy cave. Every time she left her cave, she scraped moss on her head, which was why she was called Old Greeny. Star and Moon found Old Greeny breathing fire furiously. That nasty, selfish little elf, she was muttering. If I were younger, I'd show him a thing or two. What happened? asked Star. Wicked elf stole my last tooth, said Greeny, blasting fire into the air. Shh. It was so loose that he was able to grab it while I was sleeping. And there's an old dragon there, wearing some type of bonnet, with smoke coming out of her nose. But I thought he only stole the king's rubies, said Moon. He usually does, said old Greeny and he grinds them into ruby glitter for his one and only magic trick, turning animals into frogs. Stupid elf. He must think that by adding dragon tooth powder to ruby glitter, he'll be able to do more powerful tricks. But it won't work. The only powder that would help him is powdered unicorn horn. Dear me, Star, I'm sorry if I scared you. Star's mother had warned her that wicked elf might try to steal her horn someday. The thought of him grinding into powder filled her with dread. In the last book, I thought we only had to worry about dragons. Yep. Also, even though it's a spell of friendship, these dragons are acting like they've been friends for a while. Well, we don't know how long dragons and unicorns live, so even though Star and Moon became friends at the end of the last book, mm. could have still been a while. Let's talk about something else, said Old Greeny. Tell me. Why did you two come to see me? We had a question, said Moon, but you've already answered it. Thank you. With that, Moon turned and ran down the path to Wicked Elf's castle. He has a castle and we know where it is. Why are not all the dragons and the unicorns ganging up on him? Hmm. Stop, stop, called Star, chasing after him. What are you doing? I'm going to be brave and get old Greenie's tooth back, he yelled. You can't do that, shouted Star. Wicked Elf is too dangerous. He could steal my horn. Don't come, shouted Moon. I'll go alone. Star wanted to stop, but she couldn't let her friend go to Wicked Elf's castle alone. 
What if Wicked Elf turned Moon into a frog? Wait, yelled Star. I'll go with you if you'll stop at the king's dump first. I need something to protect my horn. I just got the picture. That's a boot on her horn. Boot to the head. Moon and Star ran to the back of the king's palace, where the king threw out his old clothes and rusty armor. Star poked her horn around in the rubbish and came up with a handsome old leather boot marked with the emblem of the king. It fit her horn perfectly. I'm coming, she cried, dashing after Moon, who was already back on the path. I wouldn't call it fitting her horn perfectly. Well, we don't know that she had, well, her head is still tilted down, so she hasn't gotten the boot fully over her horn yet. Yeah, well, if it fit her horn perfectly, it would also fit it size-wise, because that boot's a little large. Yes, well, I don't think anyone would have a boot the width of a unicorn's horn. Yeah, because you, your leg wouldn't fit in that. And there's your peg leg. Uh, this isn't a pirate book. Arg. The path ended at a small wooden hut with the name W. Elf on the door. Could have sworn it was a castle. Did it not just two pages ago say Wicked Elf's Castle? I think so. I think they were getting two scenes mixed up. Not very fancy, is it? whispered Star. She ducked behind a bush and held still as Wicked Elf came out. He was holding an empty cloth sack. Grand haul this morning, he said, walking past Star and Moon without seeing them. This afternoon I'll steal some rubies, come back to eat supper, and then grind up that old dragon's tooth. Fill an exposition check. Yeah, they have a tendency to do that apparently when the heroes are around or when they're facing the heroes and go, I'm going to tell you what my plan was the entire time. Star and Moon waited until he was out of sight. Then they crept up to the strange little hut and pushed open the door. Inside, there was nothing but a dusty, dirty floor. Some castle, said Moon. They just did that again. Wait, my horn is tingling, said Star, dropping her boot. She tapped the ground with her horn in several places. There, she said, scraping dirt away from a small red handle. Moon pulled the handle with his teeth and drew up a secret trap door. Through the opening, Star and Moon saw an underground storeroom filled with piles of rubies. Then why do they need to go steal more? Yeah. Sitting on the nearest pile was Old Greeny's tooth. Yep, a unicorn with a boot on its horn. Interesting images in this book. I really wish you could see, but, you know, fair use and all. Watch how brave I am now, said Moon, squeezing through the hole. He grabbed the tooth and climbed back out of the hole. But as he did that, a cloud of pink glitter fell upon him. Star tried to brush it off with her horn, but it stuck to Moon and to her horn, too. Put your boot on, said Moon. This glitter could be dangerous. Then how does the boot help? As soon as we get home, we'll wash it off. Moon raced down the path, and Star ran after him. She had a hard time keeping up. Moon, stop, she finally cried. The boot is too heavy and my legs feel weak. I have to rest. We can't stop, said Moon. Hey, what are you doing? Star flipped the boot into a bush and collapsed under a tree by the side of the path. Within seconds, she was sound asleep. Terrified, Moon sat down beside her and wrapped his arms around Old Greeny's tooth. I'll let you sleep, but only for ten minutes, he said, and then he yawned. So it's making them sleepy? Could be. Though, where did a powder come from to make them sleepy? Because we've already been told that the ruby powder can only turn creatures into frogs. Hmm. Next page. Also, if she had to rest and the boot was to protect her horn, if she's laying on the ground, the boot wouldn't be too heavy because the boot would be touching the ground. Mm -hmm. Time passed. Star dreamed something was wrong and woke up. Where was she? Why did her head feel funny? Moon, she cried. Wake up! Moon jumped to his feet and shouted, What happened? Immediately, he knew the worst had happened. Old Greeny's tooth was gone, and so was Star's horn. Wicked Elf stole my horn while I was sleeping, cried Star. Now I have no magic. What will we do? No matter how brave he wanted to be, Moon couldn't stop big, hot dragon tears from running down his cheeks. Don't cry, said Star. We may not have magic, but we have our brains. And, she added, looking into the bushes, one leather boot. Why is that boot floating? Is it more in the paragraph here? It's not floating. 
look at the image. It's caught on something. Oh. Star set the boot in the middle of the path and said, I have an idea. It's supper time. Wicked Elf should be coming along that path any minute. Let's hide and watch what he does when he sees the king's boot. Star and Moon waited, and sure enough, soon Wicked Elf appeared, bent under a full sack. One side had something sharp and pointy sticking out of it. My horn, whispered Star. The other side had something tooth-shaped sticking out of it. Old Greenie's tooth, whispered Moon. Look, Wicked Elf stopped at the boot. Noticing how handsome it was, he picked it up and stroked the emblem of the king. This must be my lucky day, he said greedily. A dragon's tooth, a unicorn's horn, and now a king's boot. But where's the other one? Wicked Elf looked around. I can't wear just one boot, he said, throwing down the boot and going on his way. After he'd gone, Star said, Moon, take the boot and run through the forest until you're ahead of Wicked Elf. Put the boot in the path so he'll find it again. Wicked Elf will think it's the other boot. If he's as greedy as I think he is, he'll put down his sack and come back to find the first boot. When he does, grab his sack and bring it back to me. Good plan, said Moon, feeling wonderfully brave again. Why would he put the sack down to get the boot? I don't know. Also, I guess this was before boots had left and right sides. Apparently. Moon ran through the trees quickly and quietly, making a wide circle so that Wicked Elf didn't see or hear him. Moon set the boot on the path ahead of Wicked Elf, hid in the trees, and watched. When Wicked Elf came up the path, he saw the boot and shouted, There's the other boot! Oh, good! Now I'll have to go back and get the first one. But I'm not carrying this heavy sack with me. Why not? It's much more valuable than the boot. Yeah. Wicked Elf hid his sack behind a tree and started back down the path. When he was out of sight, Moon picked up the sack and ran through the forest to the place where Star was waiting. I have an answer for that question you just asked. Plot convenience. Also, why take the whole sack? You only need the horn and the tooth. Wouldn't it be easier to steal something from the sack rather than stealing the entire bag? Mm -hmm. Because also, he might not notice at first that things were missing from the bag. But he's definitely going to notice that the bag is missing. Yeah, you can also put two sticks in there to make it look like those things are still there. Exactly. Well, they're being brave, not smart. But Star was not there. Instead, Wicked Elf sat on a rock and grinned. In his hand, he dangled the little pink frog with a star on his forehead. Moon was so scared, he started to cry again. Bring me my sack, you sniveling little dragon baby, said Wicked Elf or I'll turn you into another pink frog for dessert. How does the Wicked Elf know that any of that happened? What? That, well, unless Moon ran out where Wicked Elf could see him, how does Wicked Elf know that he should be using Star as bait against Moon to get his sack back? Hmm, good point. You can have your sack, said Moon, but not until you change that frog back into Star. Also, how does he know for sure that it's Star, other than it has a star on its forehead? His strong words helped him stop crying and gave him an idea. Moon started to cry again, but this time he was faking. The more Moon cried, the more Wicked Elf laughed. Wicked Elf laughed so hard that he didn't notice Moon slip his hand into the sack and grab Star's horn. But Star noticed... With a sudden wiggle and twist, she burst out of Wicked Elf's grasp and hopped over to Moon. Quick as can be, he touched the horn to her forehead, and Star became a unicorn again. Wicked Elf was furious. I'll turn you both into frogs, he cried. He grabbed a handful of pink glitter from his pocket and threw it in the air. Star flashed her horn at the glitter and made it disappear. I don't think so, she said. My horn is telling me that I can turn you into a snail if I want to. How convenient. Quite. I didn't know turning a wicked elf into a snail was a common unicorn horn spell. Apparently. Also, that is a nice image there. Yes. Very nice. Star reared up on her hind legs, a uh, cloud of pink glitter, and wicked elf rearing back. <laughs> kind of like, don't turn me into a snail. How about a frog? I turn everyone else into frogs. Maybe it's okay. Wicked Elf stamped his feet. I'll get back at you, he shouted. Or a worm, said Star, taking a step closer to him. Keep your old dragon's tooth, said Wicked Elf, running away. 
And as for the rubies, I have more at home. Uh huh. Like we said, why did you go out in the first place? Star and Moon laughed with relief as they watched him disappear from sight. But after a while, Moon stopped laughing and looked very sad. What's the matter? asked Star. You have more power than ever. Because you were brave, said Moon. But I don't have wings because I'm not brave. I cry too much. But you were very brave, said Star. If you hadn't put my horn back on my head, I'd be in Wicked Elf's stomach right now. Disturbing thought. Yeah. Also, if he wanted something to eat, since he implied that he eats the frogs, why turn the forest creatures into frogs? The unicorn was much larger than a frog. Good point there. Little depressing point, but hey. Yeah. Suddenly, Star noticed little things like leaves growing out of Moon's shoulders. Moon, I think you are growing wings after all. Can you feel them? Moon couldn't believe what Star was saying. Yet he did feel something tickling his shoulder blades. And when he wiggled certain muscles, his body seemed to lift from the ground. That's it, cried Star. Keep flapping and you'll fly. Why are my wings growing even though I couldn't stop crying? Because crying has nothing to do with bravery, said Star. You can cry and be brave at the same time. The more Moon flapped, the more his wings grew and the higher he rose from the ground. Take old Greenie's tooth back to her called Star, tossing him Wicked Elf's sack, which contains stolen rubies, which now makes you guys thieves. And from the king, who we don't know if he is good or wicked, but since Wicked Elf is stealing from him, yeah. Star ran through the woods and reached Old Greenie's cave just in time to see Moon landing, first on a tree, and then in some blueberry bushes. Old Greenie watched her tooth pop out of the sack. Opening her mouth wide, she caught the tooth in midair and flashed everyone a hot, happy grin. Star was happy too, for many reasons. She had helped Old Greenie get her tooth back, she had watched her best friend grow wings, and she had learned more about her magical horn. Best of all, she had learned that she didn't have to be so afraid of losing her horn anymore. Now she knew that if she couldn't use her magic, she could always use her brains. Oh, okay. So, what did you think? <laughs> well, it's a little more plausible than the first book. Mm. Not by much, but at least there's no house spell. Ah, yeah, the house spell. Also, the dragons aren't evil in this one, and nobody's killing anyone. Ah, well, no one killed anyone in the story itself, but I think there were hints that um, Wicked Elf does. Yes, Wicked Elf turns forest creatures into frogs and eats them. But the book does not give us any proof that forest creatures other than birds, dragons, and unicorns are sentient. Mm. It's interesting that both dragons and unicorns grow up by being brave. What do you do when everything's peaceful? Yeah. And this has been an Ember's Reading Room rendition of Baby Unicorn and Baby Dragon by Jean and Claudio Marzolo, illustrated by Kimberly Bulkin Root. If you enjoyed this video, please share with your friends, consider subscribing, and or checking out more Ember's Reading Room videos or other videos on our channel, mostly pop culture. If you would like to support this channel financially, please check out our Patreon and Coffee pages. Please see below for a link to Amazon if this book is still in print. Also, exclusive to the Ember's Reading Room videos is a link to the shopping rebate site, Ebates. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel.